Hey all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor and in today's video, we're gonna be setting up a brand new Steam Deck for the first time. So I'm gonna walk you through the initial setup process. Then we're gonna get into Steam OS and explore the different parts of the UI that you get right out of the box. We're gonna cover some settings that I recommend you change. Then we're gonna jump into a game and see what settings and configurations you can set up there. And we're gonna explore the desktop mode that is on the Steam Deck, which is a Linux environment. We're gonna connect it to a Steam Dock and show what is capable there. And then we're going to install Decky, which is a plugin manager where you can install various plugins, including a custom boot animation, which is what we're gonna do on this Steam Deck here. So if all that sounds good, let's go ahead and get right into it. Powering on the Steam Deck for the first time takes you to language selection, then you can select your time zone here. I'm in central standard time. And then you can choose your Wi-Fi network you want to connect to. After that, it's gonna take you to the login screen where you can then use your mobile device to open up Steam, go to the authenticator section and just scan the QR code, confirm it, and you will be signed in. It's as easy as that. Once you're loaded in, you're greeted with a welcome screen and some brief tutorials where it kind of tells you where things are in the UI and in the physical device itself, all the buttons, volume buttons, SD card. Then you are landed on the home screen, which has some recent games that you can install. You can also hit the Steam button and open the side menu, which is going to be your main navigation, which this is your library for all your games. Hitting it again, we can go to the store, and this actually connects to the internet where you can go and download games, see deals, see sales. There's a friends and chat section which has your friends list. Going to media, this is where you can see community made media as well as your own media screenshots that you might have posted. And then we have the download section which is going to show you all your current downloads and settings, which has the settings for all the Steam Deck and power options such as sleep, shutdown, restart, and switching to desktop. Going back into settings though, we can see that we have options to choose our language, show the battery percentage, which I recommend you turn on, and you can also change the clock format and time zone. In system, we have the ability to check for updates, which I recommend you do when you get the Steam Deck. There's a lot of great features and bug fixes, you can also change to beta preview builds. There's an option to enable developer mode. We'll get back to that. And then various information about your Steam Deck. You can change the name as well, which pops up the keyboard. You also get OS version, build number, kernel version, BIOS version. And then you can see actual hardware specs such as processor, RAM, graphics card. Going to security, there is some lock screen settings here if you prefer. And under internet, you can choose to connect to Wi-Fi or go offline. Notifications has all your notification settings. The display section has things like brightness and the night mode settings. You can set up a schedule. You can also change power settings here like when to put the screen to sleep. I recommend doing 20 minutes when plugged in. And here you can change volume settings, volume outputs, as well as voice outputs. And I recommend you turn the UI sounds off because they do get annoying after a while. Here you can enable Bluetooth and connect to devices such as mice, controllers, keyboards. Under controller, you have a bunch of game, rumble, haptics, and you can even change it to Nintendo Switch layout, which I have done here, but I leave that disabled. There's also some calibration settings. Under keyboard, you can select a theme for your keyboard, pull it up, and select a theme from the menu, which will preview that theme, whichever one you select. I usually like to keep it just on the default because it blends with the UI better. You have the option to change your keyboard layout as well.
Here you can customize your friends list in chat settings. I do like to enable the full names next to the nicknames. Here is your download settings, such as your closest server. You want to set this to the closest one, and you can change some scheduling. I also like to en enable allow downloads during gameplay so that I can download games while I'm playing another game. Here are some cloud settings. I usually just leave those defaulted. And then family settings, if you want to set up like family, library sharing. And here is all the remote play settings. Here's where you will be able to see all your games on your storage device. And under home, there is some customizations you can do there. And the library is where you can add a non-Steam game by entering a product key. Clicking the ellipsis button on the right brings up the overlay menu. And scrolling up to the top, we have our notifications, which is going to be all your recent notifications. Then we have another friends list menu where you can see groups, your friends, your favorites, if you've created any, and also recent chats. We also have a quick settings menu for things like brightness, audio, microphone, and we can change airplane mode, Wi-Fi, toggle Bluetooth, and we can toggle night mode quickly. Also some controller settings. Going into performance, we have our battery life with estimated time and our performance overlay levels, which we can't see right now. We'll see those in game. We can open up advanced and do some frame rate limiting. If you want to drop it from 60 hertz down to 30, this is where you would do that. There's also some more advanced thermals and overclocking features. We'll go ahead and keep it on the basic settings for now. And then one more menu, we have various help options. Hopping back over into our left menu, going to our library, we can see various games we have here, and we can see that they have these little green icons down at the bottom. So jumping into that, these are going to be our Steam Deck compatibility ratings, where green indicates that it is fully compatible and gives you all the details on that whereas a yellow rating is going to indicate that it is playable but with some stipulations and it's going to detail those sometimes it's just like small text or something that can be easily remedied and then if it's not compatible it's going to have a white icon and it will give you details there saying why it's not compatible scrolling quickly through the library will give you an alphabetical list as it scrolls which is helpful for finding games quickly we're gonna hop into a compatible game and hit the install button. This is gonna start triggering your download and then we can go into the settings menu, go and view our current downloads. It's going to install a bunch of Steam runtime and Proton stuff first to get that compatibility foundation going. If you would like to speed up the process, you can always plug in an ethernet cable I have one here connected to a USB-C dongle. Your Steam Deck will most likely ramp up its fans when it's downloading and sound really loud, and this is totally normal. Going to the game options here and clicking the cog, this is where you can go and uninstall your game if you want. Clicking the controller icon, you get a little welcome menu which has quick tutorials. Then you can view the layout of the controls. You can also edit the buttons the D-pad, the triggers, the joysticks, and the track pads. Going into those setting options, you can export a layout or view its details. You can also then click the layout and go to community layouts, which are really cool community-made templates that you can download for your controls. Once you're in game, you can go ahead and hit that left Steam menu and you get your game options here. You can hit the controller settings and you get that familiar screen. But if you scroll down, you also get some custom options for the specific game. And I like to go into the gyro behavior and it will give you a little tutorial at first. I actually like to disable this as well as any trackpad settings so that my palms don't accidentally hit it. Navigating to our ellipsis menu and going to the performance section, here is where we can see that overlay. The first setting being just the frames per second counter, the second setting being battery information, GPU information, and a frames per second graph. Level 3 has the 
CPU, GPU, battery, as well as temperatures. And level four has everything, including clock speeds, FSR, fan speed, the works. Clicking our left menu, going to power, we can go into desktop mode, which will take us into our Linux environment where we can navigate the mouse with the trackpad. We can left click with the right trigger button, right click with the left trigger button, and we can even bring up the virtual keyboard by hitting Steam button and X. Better still, we can use our Steam dock by connecting our keyboard and mouse. We now have access to enhanced feature set. We'll go ahead and open up our console and get started with Deki installation. First, we'll type in password command, which will set a pseudo password. Don't worry if the password you type won't appear. Then we will paste in our command that will actually install Deki on the system. Go ahead and hit enter, enter your password, and that will install. Next, we will go back into game mode and we will navigate to our system settings and enable developer mode, which will unlock this menu down here. We will then enable remote debugging. It will restart the system, which then we can go into our ellipsis menu and we'll see Deki. Here we can see the system settings. We can also go into the plugin manager and here is all our plugins. We'll scroll down to our animation changer and click install. From there, we will go ahead and click on that and we can see all our animations. We'll find one, download it, and select it for our boot menu, and then restart our device and enjoy our custom boot. Isn't that nice? To top it all off, you can connect a monitor to your Steam dock. Here I connected my monitor via DisplayPort, and now you have a full-blown desktop. PC. And that's it y'all. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and I'll see y'all in the next one.